with multiple mouth parts displayed. Bone hard grappling hooks poised to pierce and immobilize prey. But the real nightmare remains unseen. And some specimens grow to twice the length of a man. At the bottom of the ocean dwells a bizarre looking creature. A fish so ancient it has remained unchanged for 300 million years. This is the hagfish. Its velvet smooth skin lacks scales and slithers along the ocean floor. It has a skull, but no spine. Tiny holes run along the sides of its wriggling body, some for breathing and some for sliming. But its most bizarre feature is its mouth. Like something out of an alien movie. This jawless maw is made for mincing up dead bodies. Multiple rows of sharp teeth are packed on two bony plates. With its single nostril, it picks up the sweet scent of death. A feast has arrived. It has no fins, but its paddle-like tail makes light work of swimming. The hagfish latches on and its mouth goes to work. Flesh is ripped from the carcass and shoved down its toothy throat. Soon, it's a frenzy of multiple mincing mouths. And to keep other hungry onlookers at bay, the hagfish excrete copious amounts of slime into the water. A shy shark snatches one, but ends up with a mouthful of snot instead. In minutes, the hagfish will strip the carcass to bone. It may be months before they find another meal like this. While he may look comical with his strange long nose, the assassin bug is no laughing matter. This freak has the ability to literally liquefy his prey. His red color is not just for show, it's a warning to other predators. With antennae as long as his body, he sniffs out his next meal. And his needle-like beak can inflict a painful sting. Once a tasty meal has been targeted, the silent assassin grabs hold. Once he finds a soft spot, he stabs his blade-like proboscis into his victim. Within seconds, the prey is paralyzed and its insides begin to dissolve. The proboscis pierces the victim's gut, 
injecting a lethal cocktail of enzymes and digestive juices. This venomous saliva destroys everything in its path, turning the cells into soup. Once the bug puree is ready, the assassin slurps it all up, back through his deadly straw. Most bugs that feed this way have two separate tubes, one for injecting and one for sucking. But the assassin's beak acts as both syringe and siphon, which allows it to target large prey twice its own size. This amphibian is a master of disguise and can hide in plain sight. Suddenly it bolts. The sudden movement has given away the game. Bursts of speed versus relentless stalking. This toad's legs are about half its body length. Powerful thigh muscles act like springs, releasing bursts of energy that enables the toad to hop and even run at top speed. Finally, it reaches the water. Cobras can't swim, can they? It's a seven-foot forest cobra versus a four-inch toad, both excellent swimmers and blindingly fast when they need to be. But the toad is cornered by a completely different predator. In the shadowy underworld of the tropical rainforest, if the cobra doesn't get you, the African bullfrog probably will. Even a cobra would think twice about taking on an African bullfrog. Despite its appearance, its immense bulk is not obesity. The African bullfrog is a powerhouse of muscle. Muscular hind legs and long feet push the bullfrog off the ground. At over four pounds, it sails through the air like a cannonball. The wide mouth with bony projections, or odontoids, on the lower jaw acts like a gin trap does to secure prey. Its strike is as fast as it is powerful. Now that's quick. Frog's sharp odontoids quickly crush the life from his hapless prey. Skulking in the shadows, a secretive serpentine hunter takes extravagant jaws to a whole new level. Jaws so bizarre, they were incorporated into Hollywood's extraterrestrial creature in the blockbuster Alien. The snowflake eel picks up a scent an army crab. He's going to have to get very close to unleash his weapons. Repositioning himself down current of his target, he sets up an ambush. Lurking in the shadows, he waits. The crab is close. breaks cover and edges closer. The snowflake eel jaw is armed with sharp, piercing teeth that curve backwards towards its throat to prevent prey from breaking free. 
when the eel has its prey secured, it unleashes the death blow that inspired Ridley Scott's Alien. A second set of jaws, located behind the eel's skull, lunge forward at high velocity. These pharyngeal jaws clutch the prey and pull it down into the throat for swallowing whole. Once caught in the double jaw grip, the crab can struggle all it wants. Escape is not an option. It will spend its dying minutes deep in the eel's throat. This is the fishing spider. This spiky-legged spider haunts fish pond residents the world over. Its good looks are enough to scare you to death. but it's its legs that are truly freaky. This bizarre arachnid not only walks on water, it can read the underwater world with its legs. Millions of tiny spikes detect vibrations on the water's surface. It can accurately judge where the movement is coming from and even what prey item it is. A male lives in this section of the pond, and it's full of food. His back legs anchor him to the shore, while his super-powered feet get to work. Every little vibration is assessed. The fish was just out of reach. Walking on water is one thing, but this incredible spider can also breathe underwater. The waterproof hairs around the spider's abdomen create an air bubble. Its lungs look like the stacked pages of a book and draw the oxygen from the bubble. This incredible adaptation allows the fishing spider to breathe underwater. The fish may have been scared out of the spider's hunting zone, but now they're in the shallows. fishing spider injects paralyzing venom into the fish, which slowly turns its insides into a nutritious soup. This prize catch is something worth bragging about. Vampire bats are the only bats in the world that feed on blood. It's a master of echolocation and uses bouncing ultrasonic sound waves to locate its victim. It can fly, but it prefers to sneak up on its prey from the ground. Strong hind legs and wrists support its weight while elongated thumbs steer and push it off the ground. It can tell where the warm blood runs close to the skin, thanks to heat sensors near its nose. Dinner is served. 
But this vampire doesn't simply gulp down his victim's blood. There are special forces at work. With the sharpest teeth in the animal kingdom, the vampire bat gently shears away the hairs of its victim and makes a small incision in the skin. The tongue slips along the funnel-shaped bottom lip, lapping up the blood. Fine microscopic grooves line the soft tissues in the mouth. The blood flows up these narrow tubes and pours into the throat of the bat. Thanks to a local anesthetic in the bat's spit, the victim doesn't feel a thing. And a blood thinner keeps the life liquid flowing. The horse has no idea the bat is there. And the vampire feeds up to 30 minutes undisturbed. Without its blood fix every night, the bat will starve to death. But through super hearing, the vampire will recognize this horse's breathing. And tomorrow night, he will return for more. With skin like glass, you can see the blood vessels, its intestines, its liver, and don't forget, its beating heart. Even their skeleton is visible, and in some species, the bones are green to help conceal them in the undergrowth. Thanks to some extremely thin skin on their stomachs and extremities, and a severe lack of pigment in their cells, their bodies do not reflect the incoming light, but rather allow it to pass straight through them. The result is a translucent skin. Predators don't have a hop in hell of finding this elusive ghost. A sandy wasteland. Its savage ruler lies hidden beneath the sand. Its presence revealed only by catapulted corpses. The grisly remains of discarded victims. Empty shells of insects, murdered and tossed aside. But by what? By this, the antlion, the spawn of the netherworld. This is its lair. Digging backwards in the sand, the antlion creates a funnel-shaped burrow. Then, it buries itself to lie in wait for its next victim. The ants have no idea that a trap lies below. A firebug loses its grip on the sand and slips down the funnel into waiting jaws. Once he pulls his catch into the sand, the antlion injects it with poison and digestive enzymes and sucks out its liquefied guts. Then it throws the empty bug shell up, up, and away. If the victims don't slide down on their own, the antlion launches an assault. Struggling only makes matters worse. Assassin reaches up to make the kill, injecting its toxic cocktail. Resistance is futile. 
once you've fallen into the lion's den, there's only one way for this horror story to end. Mercury, the black mamba, has found the ideal snake nursery. But this is not a private birthing ward. This custom-built termite mound is rigged with surveillance equipment and delicate lighting. She will be depositing her precious cargo live on television. The vigil at Mercury's nest site continues for four long days and nights. And then, the true purpose of her mission emerges. One by one they appear. Not hard like a bird's egg, but soft, pliable, and leathery to the touch. Parchment-like eggshell is permeable, allowing gases in and out so the embryo can breathe inside. Over the next 90 days, the eggs will continue to swell in size and weight while the embryos develop. Twenty-four hours later, exhausted, Mercury has deposited all of her 14 eggs. It's now time for her to restore her depleted energy, drink fresh water, hunt, and survive. Safe in their secret chamber, 14 new super snakes are coming to life. Three moons have waxed and waned since Mercury laid her eggs. Inside each of the leathery shells, a miniature mamba has been rapidly developing. The embryo extracts calcium from the shell and nutrition from the yolk sac and lengthens rapidly, gradually resembling a long, slender snake. Three months later, a new generation of mambas is ready to enter the world. The young snakes don't exit immediately, preferring to move around in the egg and absorb the remainder of the egg yolk, which will sustain them until their first kill. Deadly enough to kill a man just minutes after birth. One by one, the baby mambas emerge from their nursery. 20 inches long, independent, and already capable of catching prey the size of a small rat. From a distance, it looks like an ordinary wild hog. Up close, it's a walking dental disaster. Its real name is Bobby Rusa, and it is found in the jungles of Indonesia. You'd also be shy if you looked like this. The females are plainly pig-like. But as male Bobby Roos's mature, their upper canines rotate in the jaw, pushing through the roof of the snout in the opposite direction. Such a radical adaptation must have an important purpose. But scientists aren't sure what the real point is. The fang face is an omnivore, but his teeth aren't used for killing prey or even digging up roots. The fangs are brittle and break easily. <laughs> 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 
so brittle that when males fight, they box with their forelegs and keep their teeth out of the way. But these teeth have an even more sinister twist. They will never stop growing. In old males, they can curl towards the forehead, even piercing the skull. The one thing scientists do know is that bigger males with longer fangs attract more mates. These ladies have interesting taste in partners. Imagine having to deal with a grumpy male with a tooth growing into his skull. This behemoth is the subject of myth and legend, with only a few having ever been seen in the wild. The Goliath bird-eating tarantula is a feared spider for good reason. It has a leg span of 11 inches and weighs over six ounces. It's so big, it feasts on mice and even birds. Retractable claws help the Goliath climb up any surface. When the day draws to an end, the jungle comes alive. And almost everything is on the Goliath's menu. Its eyes are small and ill-equipped for nighttime hunting. So it relies on its most fine-tuned sense, touch. Thousands of hairs along its body allow it to detect prey by feeling for vibrations. Just ahead is a gecko. The reptile seems unaware that it's just inches away from the world's biggest spider. As the Goliath's enormous fangs sink into the gecko, paralyzing venom is injected into its bloodstream. Very quickly, the gecko's organs shut down and the venom's enzymes start digesting it from the inside out. It's a gruesome way to die. But then again, the most fearsome spider in the world wouldn't have it any other way. Deep on the ocean floor, the sand striker, or bobbit worm, waits with multiple mouth parts displayed, bone hard grappling hooks poised to pierce and immobilize prey. But the real nightmare remains unseen. Coiled, pent-up aggression as long as an arm. And some specimens grow to twice the length of a man. As night falls, many sand strikers emerge to feast. It's a bad neighborhood to hang out in.
but fish are fast, and the sand strikers are feeding blind. They don't have eyes or a brain. They react only if one of their antennae is triggered or if a shadow lingers. Patience. Gotcha. And the sand strikers are just getting started. It's time for the main course. Underground, there's plenty of storage space. Anything on the seabed is fair game. Even spikes and venom are no match. in seconds. Massacre over. The strikers withdraw to digest. Until the next time.